Hi everyone. On behalf of Team HMT, I'm Sriram Nagarajan, and I welcome you to watch this module where we'll be discussing about the International Regulation for Prevention of Collision at Sea, 1972. So this is also called by the name Colrex or Rules of the Road or Navigational Rules and any other local names that are applicable in a few countries. As a navigator, we do not want to get a very close to any target or get involved in situations wherein our navigational competence is tested. So always navigation related incidents are a nightmare. So let us see what this call regs or the IRPCS is all about. We start off with the background. The collision regulations of 1960, which was there for a long time, was replaced by the 1972 convention and aptly named as the International Regulation for Prevention of Collision at Sea. This was adopted on 20th October 1972 and came into force on 15 July 1977. This IRPCS or Colrex is divided into six parts Part A, B, C, D, E, and F, followed by the annexes that are also part of this, and it is divided into four annexes, one, two, three, and four. Let us go across each of the part and see what it contains. Starting with part A, in, that is the general part, it contains rules one, two, three. Rule one talks about application, what is applicable to vessels upon the high seas, and where is it applicable, what is connected to the high seas, and that is navigable by the seagoing vessels. Rule two puts the owners of responsibility and covers up the responsibility of the master, owner, and crew to comply with the rules. Rule three takes us through definitions for various terminology that may find across in this IRPCS or contracts. Moving on from part A, we move to part B that is divided into three sections. Part B is also called steering and sailing rules. Section one contains the conduct of vessels in any condition of visibility. Rule four talks about the application of the section one. Rule five gives us an idea about what we need to do as a lookout on the ship and what parameters we have to take into account. Rule six guides us into what uh, scenarios, circumstances, or situational awareness we should have in determining a safe speed so that we can navigate safely. For a navigator, assessing risk of collision is very important, and that is what is there in rule number seven. After having assessed risk of collision, we move on to understanding what is the scenario exactly, and then decide on the course of action to avoid the collision. Rule number eight talks to us about and guides us on action that is to be taken to avoid collision. Rule number nine guides us on what is to be done when we have to navigate our vessels in narrow channels. There are some areas where we need to have some separate uh, uh, rules that guide us into navigating safely and the areas are pretty much demarcated and they're called as the traffic separation scheme, which are adopted by IMO. So rule 10 tells us what these traffic separation schemes are all about and what we need to do if we are navigating anywhere near them or if we are navigating by uh, going across the traffic separation scheme. Moving on to section two of part B. This talks about conduct of vessels in sight of one another, that is rules 11 to 18. Rule 11 is the application of this section two. Rule 12 talks about conduct of sailing vessels in relation to each other. Rule 13 gives us a guidelines on what is to be done if you are involved in a overtaking situation. Rule 14, in a similar way, tells what is to be done by the vessels which are uh, getting into a head-on situation. Rule 15 is when we ascertain that there is a crossing situation, 
who needs to take action and what will be the appropriate action. Continuing with the section two of part B, rule 16 talks about what action is to be taken by a vessel that is called the giveaway vessel. And rule 17, it tells us what is to be done by the stand-on vessel. Rule 18 very nicely puts across the responsibilities across various vessels so that the safe passage is not impeded in any given condition. Section 3 of Part B talks about the conduct of vessels in restricted visibility when we are navigating in and around areas of restricted visibility. So this is rule number 19 where we are literally not in sight of the other vessel, the target. Moving on to part C, this is talking about lights and shapes that have to be displayed and exhibited by various types of ships or any other uh, craft which is there uh, navigating on the water. Rule number 20 talks about application of this part C and rule number 21, the definitions that we are likely to encounter for various things that are mentioned in part C. Rule 22 talks about the visibility of the lights that are fitted on vessels. Rule 23 talks about the lights and shapes that has to be used by power-driven vessels which are underway. Rule number 24 talks about towing and pushing vessels and what lights and shapes they need to be exhibited. Rule number 25 deals with sailing vessels that are underway and vessels that are under oars. Continuing further with part C, fishing vessels and what lights and shapes they exhibit is mentioned in rule number 26. Vessels that are deemed not under command or restricted in our ability to maneuver, what lights and shapes they need to exhibit is mentioned in rule number 27. Rule number 28 talks about vessels that are constrained by a draft because they're restricted in where they could probably be moving because of the draft restriction they face. Pilot vessels, they also need to exhibit lights. So th there has to be something distinguishing it. Rule number 29 talks about the lights and shapes that are to be exhibited and displayed by the pilot vessels. Continuing further, vessels that are at anchor and vessels that have uh, run aground, they also need to display, exhibit lights and shapes. And that forms the crux of rule number 30. You can see the vessel at anchor and a vessel that is run aground. Rule number 31 talks about seaplanes, what they need to be displaying when they're navigating on this water. Part D is the next thing in line for us, which talks about the sound and light signals. Rule 32 is for the definition for various things that we will come across in the part D. Rule 33 talks about the equipment that are available for providing sound signals on vessels. Rule 34 talks about what maneuvering and warning signals we need to be uh, using in various circumstances. Rule 35 talks about what sound signals we need to be using in restricted visibility. We want to draw attention of other vessels in the vicinity. So what signals should we use? that is mentioned in rule number 36, signals to attract attention. Rule 37 guides on what is to be, or what method can be used to give uh, display or uh, sound uh, distress signals when we are out at sea. The next is part E, which is exemptions. Rule number 38 deals with, uh, with this party e, exemptions which says that ships that comply with 1960 collision regulations and that were built or already under construction when this 1972 collision regulations ex uh, entered into force, they could be exempted from some requirement for light and sound signals for specified periods. So this is part E. The next after part E is part F, which is talking about the verification of compliance with the provisions of the convention. In this, Rule 39 gives us the definitions. Rule 40 talks of application that uh, says that the contracting parties that shall use the provisions of the code. 
for implementation in the execution of their obligations and responsibilities that are contained in the present convention. Rule 41 is about verification of compliance and that says that all the contracting parties who are subject uh, to this rules or convention will be also subject to periodic audits by IMO. So that completes part A to part F. Now we move on to the annexes. The annex one talks about positioning and technical details of lights and shapes. Annex two gives us information on additional signals for vessel fishing in close proximity. Annex 3 gives us the technical details of sound signaling appliances. And linking up uh, rule number 37 is Annex 4, which gives us the guidelines and inputs for the distress signal that has to be displayed on board. With this, we come to an end of our uh, brief intro on the IRPCS 1972 or the Colrex that it is called as. Thank you and continue watching our modules on IRPCS 1972 as we help you navigate through these rules. Wishing you safe sailing always. Aishri Ram Nagarajan on behalf of team HIMT sign off. Thank you.